Hello, 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 and thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. I am Claudine Jackson, your host for A Spoonful of Comfort, reminding you and me that in these discomforting times that those of us who have comfort should share it. I thank you so much for tuning in to, to WHPR. I thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. I want to start with a prayer. Dear Lord, guide me, help me, show me the way. Lord, we humbly ask that you give us the comfort, the comfort of your presence and the confidence to trust in you, even when the outcome is uncertain. And Lord, we are going through so many uncertain outcomes now that we truly need you. James 4 and 8 says that when we draw near you, you draw near us. So thank you, Lord, for your strength in our weakness. Lord, please calm my mind, bring peace to my heart, strengthen my spirit to carry on, lay a path for me, Lord, and help me to follow your way as I move forward. Help me to be faithful to your guidance. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. And help me to love and forgive others as you love and forgive us. We ask these things in the name of your Son, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have a very special guest on the, on the show today, but before I introduce the guest, I do want to thank the people who donate to the Purvis Jackson Foundation. The Purvis Foundation would not be a success without people with kind hearts who donate to the foundation. You can donate through Facebook. Facebook has uh, a section called Network for Good, and specify the Purvis Foundation, and Facebook will uh, take care of it. And uh, Amazon gave us a great donation last year, so I'm so thankful to people who have it in their heart. So we wrote you this poem. If you made a donation to the Purvis Foundation, whether it was large or small, we pray that God's love comes down to you from above because you are the best people of all. If you make a donation to the Purvis Foundation, you're helping handicapped children in need so you can be proud of yourself because you have already done a good deed. A donation to the foundation will help the situation because we can't do everything doesn't mean we can't do something. So a donation to the foundation will help the situation. Handicapped children can get help from me and you because we will do what we can do. And if you want to make a donation to the Purvis Foundation, we will greatly appreciate you. You can find us at our P.O. Box 04422. That's P.O. Box 04422, Detroit, Michigan 48204. So I thank thank the donors and those who wanted to donate and couldn't. I understand. I've been in that situation too. So I want to say a couple things about my guest before I introduce you. Um, when I was uh, when I reached my 83rd birth, you know, I, I tell you about my age because I want you to know that you can reach a certain age and still have life in you. So when I turned 83, my poem was, I'm 83 and God is still amazing me. And then now I'm 84 and my poem is, I'm 84 and I have more life inside of me. But also God is still amazing me. And I want to introduce you to a young man who is amazing me. And I say that he's amazing me because I was thinking about retiring, but he has come along and um, given me a new way of thinking. So I want to int introduce to you Blaine Irving, affectionately known as Prophet Blaine. Prophet Blaine came to us from Pretoria, South Africa, yes, where he was born. So here he is all the way, halfway around the world, helping me to, uh, inspiring me to have the energy to continue uh, with the spoonful of comfort, although he's he's going to be um, uh, upgrading 
It's an upgrade. He's going to be upgrading the show and adding to the show. So tell us a little bit about uh, your your uh, medical issues because he didn't come into the world hale and hearty. He, in his youth, he had many medical situations. So do you want to? Sure. So um, as a child, I uh, I was born with a dislocated hip, um, with hip dysplasia. And um, the pediatrician, as a, as, as a kid, didn't um, recognize the fact that I had hip dysplasia. And so by the time I, I started walking, my family discovered that I was walking with a little limp. And um, what ended up being the issue was, is, you know, when your hip has like, it, it sits in a socket. And so my hip was outside of the socket. And so I went through countless surgeries for them to fix that until um, eventually they had to fuse it in place because I, you know, either jump off the bed or somebody would pull on my leg or something and it kept popping out. So um, I don't know if I told you this previously, but, you know, in, in those days, particularly in South Africa, um, they used what's called plaster of Paris, you know, the cast or whatever yes, they put yes, on. So yes, it was more yes. like a cement, cement yes, type substance. Yes. So I was in a, in a cast like that from the top of my, my chest all the way down to my toes. Wow. Um, so when you all the other- You weren't jumping off a bed I wasn't jumping <laughs> off anything. So I actually, rather than crawling, I had to pull myself across the floor. Wow. And um, yeah, so. So this is how he started. This was all in South Africa, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us about coming to uh, the United States? Did you see, were you happy? to leave South Africa and come to the United States? And were, did you have a like, culture shock from being in a different? Uh, yes, so I, I actually was very excited to move here, um, mostly because I wanted to be with my, with my sister um, who was already living here. But then by the time I got here, the culture shock was so much for me that I actually didn't want to be here anymore. I actually wanted to go back home. And so, that that process took me about almost three years for me to kind of settle into this being home. Um, you know, so some of the things that I, I experienced when I first got here is I experienced a lot of headaches because I was always indoors, whereas in my home country, I was always outdoors. Was it very hot in your home country? Um, I mean, yes, it is hot, but I think people expect because it's Africa that it's just like super hot all the time. And it is hot, don't get me wrong, but... It depends what the, what region you're in. Uh -huh. So like here in Michigan, we have more of a humid heat. Most of Southern Africa is a dry heat. Okay. Um, and so it makes a huge difference. Now, um, I don't know about all the producing and publishing and things that you have done that led you to work with me. So can you tell us some of the... I know you won an award. Was it last year? <laughs> so I've actually won two awards. All um, right. So in, in 2015, I launched an online radio station with my spiritual mother. It was called Worship Radio, um, Worship Center Radio, I'm sorry. Um, and it very quickly took off. We were reaching hundreds and thousands of people in a very short period of time. Um, and then she ended up passing away. And uh, I actually ended up starting a brand new network called Worship Radio Detroit, um, and that also did very well, and I ended up getting an award for, I, I believe it was positive change in the community, um, so it wasn't really me, the network got an award, but yes. you know, it was my network, so I got an award, and then a few years ago, I think it was, it was either for 2020 or 2021, I don't remember, um, we actually, uh, a show that I was producing called My Sister Circle, won the Detroit Choice Awards. All right. Um, and that was that was kind of a really a huge highlight for me. All right. I'm I'm so proud of you and you. so um elated that you are going to work with me. He's going to help upgrade the show because he is uh, securing guests for this show so that I can introduce you to some remarkable people in the community and uh highlight their accomplishments. I would like to be uh, able to do more of that, which I haven't done as much of. So that's one of the things that Blaine will be uh, changing for me. He also- <laughs> She's telling on me. Has changed the this bowl full of comfort to the 
Claudine Jackson show. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> the Claudine Jackson show. It, we will still be on this station. So uh, if you see the Claudine Jackson show, it's going to be an upgraded version of a spoonful of comfort. Now, uh, you'll let me know what you think of our, our new format. So we will have guests on the show. We're going to have a trivia and a, a lot of my um, words of wisdom that I like to use. He has changed the name to Spoons Full of Comfort. So I, uh, I really appreciate that. And part of what uh, I want to do is continue what I am doing, sharing scriptures that have been fulfilled in my life, sharing poetry, uh, presenting people who are doing something in the in the um, community now uh, prophet blaine is so much younger than me that i couldn't even be his mother i'd have to be his grandmother he's my <laughs> he, he is my grandchildren's age but i recognize wisdom and uh, sincerity and quality when i see it so i Amen. will listen to this young man and uh, abide by what he is saying. And I really feel that um, I'm taking on a new phase with, the, with doing the Claudine Jackson show. Well, you know, it, as I've mentioned to you before when we've, when we've met, this is not about changing your vision. It's about enhancing what you already have. Um, and sometimes in order to do that, you just need a few more people to help. Right. Um, because most people don't realize doing production or even running a network is is not no easy, you know, it's it's not an easy job. It takes a lot, you know, for, for viewers that to get to watch on the other side of the screen, you get to see this part. But what you don't see is the, the amazing engineers and producers and the creative think tank that's behind all of this. This is the easy part. The hard job is before all this happens when you have to think about the guests and the, the creative director in the back has to create graphics and lower thirds and, you know, create the backgrounds for the green screen. So, you know, again, we're, we're sitting in front of a green screen. You don't see that. All that takes, it takes a lot of hard work um, and creativity. So every once in a while, you just need um, a few extra hands to come alongside and say, you know what, I believe in your vision. Let's make it, let's make it all the more greater. That's how shows like the Oprah Winfrey show and the Ellen DeGeneres show and the J uh, Jennifer Hudson show, that's how all those shows come to, come to pass. The, the creative person in front of the screen is merely the visionary, but all the people that come alongside you is really the, we do the grunt work. The fun grunt work, but it's the grunt <laughs> work. <laughs> I, I, I am so appreciative. That's something that was missing. Um, something that, uh, well, a TV show was something that I never planned on doing. I was in my 70s, and that's one of the other things that I want to express, that as you get older, you don't have to start declining, which is what I thought would be happening but it was in my 70s that I started doing a, a TV show and a radio show and the fact that my son Purvis Jackson Jr. who the Purvis Jackson Foundation is named for the fact that he cannot talk just really opened my lips he said one of the Psalm says, open thou my lips and my mouth will shew forth thy praise. Well, here I had this little person that couldn't talk at all and needed someone to talk for him. So that opened my lips, and I've been speaking for him and for people like him. And now um, the, the Purvis Foundation has, we have helped over uh, a, a couple hundred people in the years that we've been formed, which is not, great big but like I say because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can't do something we've given away over a hundred thousand dollars in grants in the uh, years mm -hmm. that um, that since we've been formed and I've I've heard from so many parents because we get feedback about what they did with the money and uh, how it helped them so for me who at one point was the one who needed the help and never thought that I'd be in a position to help shows you how God has moved in my life. 
because I've had my times with my son of crying and begging God and fussing at God and pleading with God and uh, wanted this child to be cured. Well, uh, God did not cure my son, but he cured me. You know, we talk about the mountains we have in life. God did not move my mountain, which was the mountain of autism. God did not move my mountain, but he moved me. So when we're praying, God might not answer the prayer the way we expect, which God has uh, answered my prayers, but not the way that I expected. So now my, my son is 48, and he still can't read, can't write, can't talk, can't live independently. All the things that I was praying for did not come about, but I had to learn, and this was hard. For, this was very hard for me. I had to learn to accept him as he was. Powerful. Instead of the person that I wanted him to be. That's powerful. So that was very hard. But once I quit feeling sorry for myself and started feeling for him, the energy came when God gives us problems. God gives us what we need to deal with the problem. Sure does. And even when we can't see a way, the Lord will make a way. You know, there's that old uh, gospel song, like a ship that's tossed and driven and battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me. And I wonder just what I have done that makes my race so hard to run. I say to my soul, don't worry. The Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way out of no way. It has been done in my life. And um, Psalm 50 and 15 says, call on me in your hour of need and I will deliver you and you will glorify me, which is why I'm glorifying the Lord because he has delivered me more and more and more. And it's still, uh, you, you know, one of my sayings is, one of my spoonfuls of comfort. You are more than a human being. You are a human becoming. I'm still becoming. At, in my 80s, I'm still deco- still becoming. Uh, Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. That's another scripture that has been fulfilled in my life. Isaiah 40 and 31, They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And when I read it, I said, Lord... If my strength gets renewed, that'll be a miracle. But we're not talking to a God of, of miracles. It's amazing how God will come through for you. All he needs is a willing heart. All he needs is a willing heart. And that is when you, when that shift will happen for you. That shift will take place. Um, all you got to do is say, God, use me. Here I am, Lord. Here, Lord, here I'm, I'm available I'm av- to you. I'm available That's, to you. Yes. Um, and, you know, even... Even with my production journey, this is not what I wanted to do. I had plenty of other ideas of what I wanted to do. This was not it. In fact, none of what I do is what I wanted to do. But it also took that that journey of of God, you know, speaking to me. And I said, okay, Lord, here I am, Lord, use me. Send me, Lord. Yes. Here I am, yes, Lord, Yes, me. yes, 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 yes. Um, and, you know, I've, I, we, I've seen the fruit of that. And I see the fruit of... You know, it, it, and I wanted to say something. It doesn't matter if you helped a hundred people, a million people, a thousand people. There's some people that won't do anything because they don't have, you know, $20 million of funding or whatever the case may be. But it's really, if you want God to use you, you have to start someplace. Not, not everybody has the opportunity to just, you know, have everything available immediately. You've got to start somewhere. Show God that he can trust you with what he gives you. Because most people, in all seriousness, with it, it doesn't matter what nonprofit or organization or whatever it is that you have, most people don't have the skill set or the ability to navigate. If you got a you know a million dollar grant or twenty million dollar grant for you to do whatever it is that that God has laid on your heart, because there's a process that you have to go through, and most people don't even have the plan in place to deal with that kind of money. Would would you say that it it's well, I know for me, in, in the times that God has used us greatly as an as a organization and as a ministry, um, 
it, it most people don't realize that dealing with like ten thousand dollars is not the same as dealing with a hundred thousand dollars and it's not the same as dealing with a million dollars if you don't have the skill set and you're not ready to deal with that type of thing you've got to start someplace so some of you are sitting on gifts and things that that you know you're supposed to be doing but you keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting stop waiting and move the Bible says faith without works is dead. You can have the faith for it, but it's not going to drop out of the sky. You're going to have to do something. Put your foot forward and start. And that's really why I believe God has been able to use you. That because is beautiful. You, you moved when on you something. When you take one step, the Lord will take two. He will two. do the rest. Yes. God is saying, give you, me something. Stepping to out with. on faith. I've had to step on out, yeah. out on faith many times. I was stepping out on faith when my children were little way before you were even thought of because like I say you, you're along with my grandchildren but uh, many times that I, I was struggling and thought you know I'm not going to be able to make it well look at me I made it you made it and you're you <laughs> so, okay so when you're going through your your struggles remember that you made it through the last struggle so you'll make it through this struggle. You, you you can't get through life without storms, trials, tribulations, problems. But God said he would be with us every step of the way. And the fact that I am here to tell you this at this advanced age, because you know 84 is not considered uh, the beginning. <laughs> 84 mm -hmm. is considered well you're over the hill but, but I, I I want younger folks to know that you can uh, still be alive into your 80s in my 50s I was still teaching I was worn out and weary and could not uh, uh, almost could not make it through the day I mean I was pushing myself through the day that in my 50s I actually felt better in my 70s than I did in my 50s. Oh, but crazy. I've talked to you about health. Once I retired, I started doing all the things that the health people tell us to do. Uh, the health poem, the six best doctors anywhere and no one can deny it, are sunshine, water, rest, and air, and exercise and diet. Now that kind of capsulizes what I started doing. I won't say sunshine. I wasn't getting much sunshine because <laughs> uh, uh, us melanin, dark-skinned so people so stay sad. out of the sun. <laughs> sunshine, water. I did start drinking more water. I drink uh, more water. I'm not drinking as much as they say we should. But water washes the nutrients. Water washes the toxins out of our body and carries the nutrients through our body. So it's important to drink a lot of water, sunshine, water, rest. Well, when the pandemic came along, didn't I get all the rest I had been wishing for and now didn't want? Sunshine, water, rest, air. Air is free. You walk out your door anytime. Sunshine is free. So even poor folks can do this exercise. Now, some women get their exercise by vacuuming and washing windows and mm -hmm groceries and that's not my preferred way <laughs> to get exercise and I'm not saying that proudly I'm making it admission to you my exercise of choice is yoga or walking oh, wow. so you can walk that's that's something that you can do uh, without training or without going to exercise classes so sunshine water rest air exercise and diet I had to start eating more fruits and vegetables. And I'm still not there, but I'm better than I was. You know, uh, if you're trying to improve, remember, I'm not who I want to be. I'm not who I'm going to be, but I'm not who I used to be. Amen. That's powerful. So uh, I, I want to share a couple of my poems. Um, one of the poems I want to share, I've talked about the political situation and how I never expected 
America to be in danger of losing their democracy. This is called times like these. I never thought that I would see the day when there were times like these, when we've been knocked down to our knees, but the Lord hears our pre pleas. The Lord hears our pleas. So we might as well pray that he show us the way to trust him each day, that a new thing he'll do to help pull us through. He can create us anew. Now, if you have fallen so far down and you are laying on the ground and comfort just cannot be found, I've been there. The day will come and you will see when you'll be back up on your knees and on your feet and moving free, moving to a better day, working on whatever come what may. You might be down, but you don't have to stay. I never thought that I would see the day when there were times like these, but I have faith and I believe and I have lived long enough to see what God can do for you and me. He can bless us unconditionally. He can pick us up and pull us through. He can restore us and renew. He did it for me and he can do it for you. I am a witness to the fact that words of the scriptures can be fulfilled in your life and that you can be revived. You know, our God is a God of restoration, renewal, revival. I'm here to tell you it can happen. Um, the last poem I want to share with you is a poem of faith. He who holds the future. This is my poem of faith. When storms are raging around me, and I'm drowning in quicksand, and unhappy things are happening, things that I don't understand. When I don't know what else to do, I'll just do what I can, because he who holds the future, he also holds my hand. I know that God is with me every step of the way. If he brings me to it, he'll bring me through it. So in his care, I will stay, and I will face my future according to his plan. Because he who holds the future, he also holds my hand. So it's almost time for, for me to go. I uh, thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. I'm so honored oh. to have had Prophet Blaine as my guest today. Thank you I'm for honored me. to have you work with me Amen. and and help energize this this youthful energy is is helping and uh tune in next week to a spoonful of comfort but when you see the claudrine Sh jackson show you'll know it's the same show uh just uh re 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 redone so until next tuesday at 11 may the power of god protect you may the love of god enfold you <laughs>